In this video, we're going to be looking at the question of when is f of x equal to its Taylor series? So we mentioned that it's possible to find a Taylor series for a function um, and the function not to actually equal its Taylor series. So we want to know, well, when will f of x be equal to its Taylor series? So remember that the Taylor series has this form where we have um, the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of the nth derivative at a over n factorial times x minus a to the n. Okay, so when is f of x going to be equal to this? Well, the idea is that we would need the limit as n goes to infinity of the nth Taylor polynomial to equal f of x. Okay, so when I say this tn of x, that's where tn of x is the nth order Taylor polynomial of f at a, which is, you can think of like the partial sums. Okay, so this is the nth order Taylor polynomial of f at a. So I say like partial sums because the um, the nth order Taylor polynomial would be the sum of the first n terms of the Taylor series. So um, the first um, Taylor polynomial would just be the, um, the tangent line. Okay. Then we'd get a second order Taylor polynomial, which would be like a quadratic approximation, third order or cubic. Um, so if as we are um, increasing our number of terms here that we have, okay, if the limit of that function um, is equaling our function f of x, then the function would be equal to its Taylor series. Okay, so we need to give a little bit of additional um, notation and things here in terminology. Um, we talked about our remainder for um, our infinite series. Remember that for um, series we had a remainder rn was equal to s minus sn. Okay, so for a convergent series, um, the series converged to s if the partial sums sn converge to s. Okay, and for cases where we couldn't find the exact sum, we could look at approximating um, how big the error rn would be if we use the first so many terms, the first um, nth partial sum. So we also have a remainder here for our Taylor series. We have rn of x will be equal to f of x minus tn of x. Okay, this is called the remainder, excuse me here, of the Taylor series. So similar idea to remainders that we talked about before. Um, this also means that you can think about the function f of x as being equal to the nth Taylor polynomial plus the remainder term. Okay. So looking at this, if the limit as n goes to infinity of r n of x equals zero, okay, well then the limit as n goes to infinity of the Taylor polynomial will be equal to the function. Okay. So this is saying that a function is going to equal its Taylor series if this remainder term goes to zero as n goes to infinity. Okay, so this is um, what this next theorem here is saying. It's saying if f of x is equal to the nth Taylor polynomial plus the remainder, okay, where tn is this nth degree Taylor polynomial, and the limit of the remainder equals zero, this is saying um, for um, within the, the, uh, the interval of convergence here around the center, then f is equal to the sum of its Taylor series on that interval. So this is basically talking about on the interval of convergence. Okay. So the whole thing is, whoops, how are we going to show that the remainder goes to zero? Okay. So how do we show the limit as n goes to infinity? of rn of x is equal to zero. Well, that's where this next part comes in. Okay, and so Taylor's inequality we'll use in some examples to prove 
um, that a function is equal to its Taylor series. We'll also see this inequality used um, a little later when we talk about approximating functions um, with Taylor polynomials, with the first so many terms of the, the Taylor series. So this is a key estimation theorem because this is going to provide um, an error bound. So you can think of this Taylor's inequality along the same lines as our alternating series estimation theorem and our integral test estimation theorem. So Taylor's inequality says that if the n plus 1th derivative of x is less than or equal to some number m um, in an interval around the center, so this x might say less than or equal to d is just saying some distance away from where um, our Taylor series is centered, then the remainder of the Taylor series satisfies the following inequality. So the absolute value of Rn of x is less than or equal to that number m divided by n plus 1 factorial times x minus a to the m plus 1 in an interval around the center. Okay, so I just want to write out a little bit of what this inequality here is saying in words. So this is saying if we can find, okay, a number m that bounds the n plus 1th derivative, um, derivative for all x, okay, in an interval around a, okay, so in picture form here, I have my center a and I'm saying I'm going to go out some distance um, d in either direction here. Excuse me, this would be to uh, a minus d and a plus d, so x would be um, between those those two different endpoints. Um, then the remainder here will be less than or equal to that m, okay, times x minus a to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial, again in that um, interval here, okay, where x is between a minus d and a plus d. Um, one way to help you remember part of this formula is that this is kind of like the alternating series formula in that this has something to do with the, the next term, so we have this um, nth remainder here if you're um, trying to use or approximate your function with the um, nth order Taylor polynomial, which would be the first n terms, and the error in doing that has to do with um, a bound here that's going to be less than or equal to the n plus 1th, something to do with the n plus 1th term. Remember the n plus 1th term, this would be fn plus 1 of a times x minus a to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial, that's what cn plus 1 times x minus a to the n plus 1 um, looks like here. So we're saying that if we can find um, a bound m for not just um, f of n plus 1 of a, but for all x um, around a, okay, then this remainder will be bounded by that value m here um, times the part that has to do with the n plus 1th term here of x minus a to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial. Okay, so um, hopefully that'll help you remember um, this, the form of this inequality. So keep watching the next um, video to see how we can use this inequality to prove that a function is equal to its Taylor series.